There was plenty of chatter yesterday about the fact that rain stopped the World Test Championship from taking place. But there was more important test cricket being played not far up the road at Bristol and we saw plenty of exciting action. England enforcing the follow-on, Shafali Verma doing what she does best, score runs, and you still get a sense that there is a result possible in this one-off test match between England versus India. So much to dissect here on Crick Buzz for the day three review. India started day three, 209 runs behind England's first innings total. And they would have been eyeing off the 60 runs that was required to pass the follow on score. It didn't start well for India because they lost Harman Precor and Tanya Bhatia to Sophie Eccleston, who bowled with better control, better flight, and she was actually drifting the ball a lot more. And I thought her pace was excellent. So she was certainly the standout for England, picking up four wickets. Dipti Sharma was impressive. She was the only one out of that Indian lineup, except for Smriti Mandana and Shafali Verma, to show some grit and determination. She hung out there and had a, a partnership with Puja Vastrika, and they nearly got India past that total. But one thing that Heather Knight did so well was that she utilised her bowlers really well. Firstly, she didn't over bowl her fast bowlers. I think they had bowled almost like 10, 10 to 9 overs it, with that first ball and then the new ball was available and she gave Catherine Brunt one over with the old ball and as soon as the new ball was taken Catherine Brunt bowled the best ball of the test match so far and it has gone viral over social media the ball basically pitched around middle to leg stump hit the top of off beautiful swing bowling and England utilised the new ball extremely well because they picked up the last two wickets. And unfortunately for the Indian fans, they were behind the follow-on score and England had no hesitation in putting them back in, especially with rain around. Well, the question was, was Shafali Verma and Shmidi Mandana, were they going to bat differently given the fact that they were still plenty of runs behind England's first total? They didn't. They actually played the same way that they wanted to. And that was really exciting to see. They got to a point before Schmidty Mandana got out before lunch, they were scoring at five runs and over. And it just shows you that Shafali Verma, unlike her more senior, more experienced players, she was playing with a full face of the bat constantly. Whereas we saw in the first innings, a lot of the Indian play and then their wrists come into it. They try to work the ball to the leg side. Unfortunately, you can't do that in test cricket. Smriti Mandana went and India did a really good job because they elevated Dipti Sharma. Like I said, she was the standout for the Indian batting order apart from the two openers and she deserved to be given another opportunity. Plus, it also allowed for the, the left and right hand combination to go well. Shafali Verma, she just keeps breaking records, doesn't she? She is the first Indian female to score back-to-back -back half centuries in, in a test match and she looks comfortable. So, while she was still going and Dipti Sharma was providing a good partnership, Rain unfortunately finally intervened. But what it did do, and I was really pleased to see, that a lot of Indian supporters, a lot of English supporters and New Zealand supporters, because the World Test Championship wasn't taking place, they were watching that test match. They were watching the likes of Sophie Eccleston being able to bowl really well. And Michael Vaughan tweeted about Sophie Eccleston. Verenda Sawag tweeted about Shafali Verma. And this is the perfect coverage that the women's cricket needs. And the fact that it's being televised on Sky, it is being beamed around the world and people are enjoying it. So that is probably the moment for me for this test match, the fact that People are watching it. People are enjoying the skill that the females are displaying. Like I said, rain intervened and we missed out on pretty much the last session. But we've still got one day left. Still got 100 overs to bowl. And if rain doesn't play a factor, I still actually think that a result is possible, albeit more so for England. I think they are in the box seat. India has Shafali Verma out there and while she's there you feel that they're going to knock the runs over pretty much and then get ahead but we saw that India can collapse 
in the first innings, they lost 10 for 64. And it all started when Shafali Verma got out. So she, unfortunately for India, seems to be the key. And of course, Dipti Sharma. So England will be trying to ensure that on early day four that they are able to pick up Shafali Verma. And then you never know what can happen. On the flip side, if Shafali Verma can keep going, I think she's striking it at 80 at the moment. If she can keep going and really accelerate, maybe, maybe there's a chance that India can put a bit of pressure on England. And given the fact that the pitch is turning, we've got some pretty good spinners. So there is plenty of action to be had on day four. Will we see a result? I guess we're gonna to have to wait and see.